Hi, this is Ico. In this video, I'll be rambling about Crapland, the zine by Sean Richer, Troika, and Suburbs. A lot of tabletop RPGs are about conquest, right? Of territories, of gold pieces, and treasures of power. Sure, not all RPGs follow that path, but it's common trope. Combat is often the principal form of interaction between the players and the world around them. It's the historical canon most RPGs relate to as proud heirs or as rebellious children of the early Dungeons and Dragons games. Turn after turn, characters move to the next hex on the map or move to the next sequence in the game, encountering foes, facing events, moving on again, exploring, venturing into the unknown. But what if there was no space to conquer, nothing to explore, no terrifying nature to confront? What kind of RPG adventure is possible when the space you roam as a fictional character is a familiar space? one you inhabit every day, like the space of a suburb. In the indie RPG space, there are a few suburb-themed games and zines. Some are standalone games, but a lot of them are Troika zines. The Troika game system and implied fantasy vibe seems to welcome weird contemporary settings and especially suburban settings. Maybe this is because Troika mechanics and game system with just two natural abilities, skill and luck, implicitly don't encourage colonial fantasy tropes. To conquer, you need strength, and perhaps when strength isn't explicitly quantified by the game system, it leads the player to another kind of interaction with the world, something other than killing and conquering foreign land. I'm not implying that there is no violence in Troika, or that in other RPGs there is only fighting and violence. But maybe some Troika settings are at least partially devoid of the exotic gaze, because their strangeness is largely familiar to the pieces who live in them. Troika pieces are not heroes exploring foreign lands. They are both citizens and denizens of Troika's strange spheres and worlds, and as a matter of fact, are quite often strange themselves. They could be anything from walking doors, to a pack of tigers, to a rebellious teenage mutant skater punk. Troika is not the only game that shifts its focus away from the tropes of exploration and conquest, Vaults of Varn by Leo Hunt, a futuristic space opera set on a blue desert planet, and Mothership, a sci-fi horror RPG, are both examples of games in which the characters are atoms dancing in an ever-changing, ever-surprising, always unexpected world. In these games, the pieces are part of a living reality that constantly reveals itself as unexpected and familiar at the same time. They participate in the world's business, the big and the small. They live, they rarely thrive, they probably die. Suburbs are subject to rapid change. In the centers, the downtowns of modern metropolis as well as the centuries-old city centers of the old worlds, things usually evolve slowly, unless there's radical shift in the balance of powers or an unexpected event of apocalyptic or godly proportions. Suburbs are in constant evolution. Like organisms, Lichens and fungi in concrete and metal. They can be mapped with accuracy. Buildings grow, roads are laid out. 
Malls are erected in just a few days, then go bankrupt, are abandoned and rebuilt all over again. Old businesses are taken over by new inhabitants, family implode, disperse or settle down for just a few days or months or years or forever. Suburbs are mutating spaces, but at the same time, they can be spaces of stillness, boredom and scarcity. Because they conceal no treasures, suburbs are seldom visited by strangers or outsiders. The only true explorers of the suburbs are their own inhabitants. They roam their suburbs restlessly by car, by foot, by bike, by skate, by city bus, without going really anywhere or searching for anything. Suburbs nullify the trope of conquest and colonialism unless the central powers attempt to conquer them, unless they are themselves a tool for the conquest of an even more peripheral, even more suburban territory. Among the various Troika models that take place in suburbs is Crapland by Sean Richer. The zine contains a full setting to play in a crappy but fun and surprising suburb. It feels like it's set in the 90s. There are references to iconic artifacts from that era, like videotapes and action heroes that suggest a 90s vibe. But there's nothing nostalgic or melancholic about it. In fact, these moments help to create an abstract setting. Crapland is at the same time super familiar. There are TV shows, empty fridges and crappy mobile phones. And super weird. The zine offers six Troika backgrounds. The first one is Sharkade. Sharkade is a shark and it's my favorite. The first sentence of its background is Sharkade doesn't know why he is. Uh, that's just amazing. Then there's Mel, an angry girl, Mark, a monkey, Tila, a computer, or maybe a microwave oven, who knows, Reef, who has cool hair, and Nope, my second favorite, who is wholly described by his name, Nope. The main antagonists or monsters or NPCs are craptors, long-jawed raptor folk who spread crappiness around them and excel at everything they do from bowling to politics. In the zine are plenty of tables and adventure sparks that ride the edge between the banal and familiar and the uncanny, almost unpleasant, but weird enough to be captivating and fun. Things that can happen to you in Crapland universe might be, and I'm quoting, forgot to put sunscreen on, test your luck, or your skin molds and a flaming craptor bursts from your pores. It demands six gallons of water or a duel to the death. Don't be ridiculous. The amazing thing about Crapland and about other suburban settings is how liberating they are. There is an immediacy in understanding and memorizing them which is always useful for gaming purposes because their strangeness is layered over a familiar structure, one made of daily life. And that feeling of traveling through familiar spaces and having the possibility to bend them and confront them is powerful. It's extremely good fun, but it's also somehow empowering. Or at least it has been for me. It allows you to revisit and change abusive past or present experiences. From shitty jobs to sour love stories to any kind of marginalizing abuse. I talked about re-exploring real-life experiences through games on the Lost Bay podcast when I spoke with Bats about their recently kickstarted game My Body is a Cage. I'll put a link in the comments if you're interested, check it out. It's a good episode. Speaking of Kickstarter, Sean has just launched a Kickstarter for Crapland 2, which is going to have a huge marked setting. I've seen some images and the table of contents of the zine and it's so beautiful. I mean, wait, let me show you something here. That's great, right? Honestly, I can't wait. 
there's going to be a bestiary, a bestiary, how to say, how do you say that? A bestiary, a supplement with a lot of NPCs. I've backed it and, and you should too. I've also made a little collection, a list on each IO of games or zines with a suburban or contemporary or mall theme. Yes, because I think suburbs and malls are, are linked, you know, they're like the two faces of the same suburban coin. Anyways, I'll link to that too below the video. I'm gonna keep investigating the suburbs and get back to you if I discover anything new. I've become pretty obsessed with that suburb thing and I'd love if at some point we could do a suburb RPG jam. We're talking about the possibility of that on my Discord server, so if you're interested about a possible future suburb game jam, drop me a DM on Twitter at TheLostBay.